Well, uh, compressors are devices uh, that operate at steady state. They take in uh, gases at a certain pressure and volume, and they compress the gas, and the pressure increases from P1 to P2. And we indicate the compressor with a larger inlet and smaller outlet because the gas, comp gas is compressed and its specific volume and the total volumetric flow rate has decreased. So for the sake of discussion, we are going to have an isothermal compressor. Let's start with the isothermal compressor. In order to keep the gas isothermal, remember we have to exchange heat But the temperature is going to remain constant. This is going to be T1. This is going to be T1. And of course, in this open system operating at steady state, D over DT terms are zero. Both of these terms are zero. DU over DT is equal to zero. And DM over DT is equal to zero. All right, so our compressor has one inlet, one outlet by writing the mass balance as dm over dt as m dot in minus m dot out to be equal to zero. We deduce that m dot in is equal to m dot out. The energy balance du over dt being equal to zero is going to be m dot, I'll call this m dot now, I don't need to say anything else, m dot times h in minus h out plus q, and this time I have shaft work. Compressor is a rigid object. Because it is a rigid object, it doesn't interact with its environment by expansion and compression. It just remains there. But we have a rotating shaft in the compressor. We need to apply shaft work for these gases to be compressed from P1 to P2 at constant temperature. Okay. So, this term is zero because of the steady state condition. All right. Now, let's look at these terms. What was enthalpy? H was U plus PV. Let's take the derivative. The H is equal to the U plus d p v. I'm going to make a change of variable. p v, we are taking this as an ideal gas, is equal to n times r times t for an ideal gas. d u for an ideal gas is n times c v star times d t. As a result, dH is equal to n c v star plus r dt. How did it happen? n times r were constants that just left the derivative sign. We only were left with dt. 
be summed the constants and combined in a common denominator, oh, common multiplier. So we have dH over dt for an ideal gas to be equal to, this parenthesis is in the wrong place, let's correct, okay, n times, now we are going to call this CP star, okay, n times CP star. dH over dt is equal to n times CP star. Now, similar to the internal energy, enthalpy of an ideal gas is only a function of temperature. If temperature is constant, these two terms should be equal to one another. As a result, this is zero, and our energy balance comes down to zero equals to Q dot, this should be plus, plus work shaft. Okay? Or Q dot being equal to minus, minus Q dot being equal to shaft work. What is this telling us? It says that, this equation says that, in order to do isothermal compression of a gas from state 1 to state 2, you need to remove an equal amount of energy in the form of heat as you have put in in the form of work. Now we are talking about convertibility of heat and work. There will be one glitch into this convertibility we will learn eventually. Now let's change our uh, direction. Let's remove the condition of isothermal compression. All right? This is not a realistic condition anyway. And when I remove this, I also remove the condition of heat exchange and my compressor is going to operate adiabatically. Q is zero. This is an adiabatic compressor. In reality, we treat all of our compressors adiabatically for the following reason, that the fluid flows through this compressor so rapidly that there is not enough time for heat exchange. So all of the compressors, you know, they, they will lose heat and uh, we will have some heat exchange. However, that heat exchange is negligible in comparison to the other sorts of uh, energy exchanges that goes through the mass exchange and also relative to the shaft work. Now we are going to continue with the adiabatic compressor. Now when we write the balance equations, conservation of mass prevails and it is the same as the previous situation of the isothermal compression. This term remains as zero because this is the term that we dropped out of this equation because our system operating, where our process was at steady state, okay? Now this term is no longer zero. This term is zero because we have an adiabatic compressor and our shaft work is going to be equal to m dot h out minus h in. But the trouble that we run into here is that we do not know the state variables to the fullest. So we know that our process starts at T1, but we don't know T2, okay? In order to be able to determine T2, we need an additional equation that specifies the state of the system, and the ideal gas law doesn't help us here. So here, we run into this glitch of not 
having all the variables at our disposal and this is going to remain elusive until we move on to the next chapter.